Hey everybody, welcome to this video discussing the best practices for Google Meet and your students. I hope you find this video helpful, and if you do, please make sure you hit that like button if you're watching this on YouTube, and please add your best practices into the comments section below. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do with Google Meet is that you're going to want to request that all of your students mute themselves unless they have a question. And it is up to teacher discretion at that point if they even want their students to be unmuting themselves to ask a question live to the entire class. Instead, it might actually be easier to have it in the chat section. However, you want to make sure that your students are muting themselves once they enter into the Google Meet um, or into the room that you're in, because what's going to happen at that point is you're just going to get too many people talking at once and it's going to turn into a jumbled mess. Uh, next, you should have students find you in their participants list and make sure they pin you to the front. The reason for that is you want students to be able to always see what's on your screen and that they're not going to get distracted by other students talking if their microphone goes off if they forget to mute it. Next, chat should be used for specific class purposes only. If you have students going through and communicating and chatting in there about something non classroom related, go ahead and boot those students out of the room. Give them a warning first, of course, then boot them out of the room, and then let them rejoin at that point. At any point, if you find that you have a student that's completely disrupting your entire classroom environment on this online version of it, then please contact those parents and also provide some sort of negative consequence for them relating to education. Next, make sure you are recording all of your Google Meet lessons. It's going to be imperative for those students who can't attend the initial meeting or the initial class that you're doing, the live stream. But if you can have them then rewatch the recording and then provide some sort of response, like the top three things that they got from the lesson, that's perfect for it. We just need to be accommodating and understanding that students might not have full internet access at all times. It's very possible that a kid might have to go into work with a parent because they can't find anyone to watch them or they can't be left alone. So being understanding and making accommodations that way is going to be imperative for student success. Next, Google Meet can be installed on any device. However, we are wanting to have students use it through their Chromebook, so please encourage Chromebook usage at all times. Now for yourself, if you find it easier to be using the iPad version or an Android version of it, by all means, go ahead, you can do that yourself. Although the laptop and Chromebook version, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to navigate. Of course, just my opinion there. And finally, make sure you post the link to the Google uh, to the Google Meet, excuse me, in your classroom uh, five minutes before the class starts. That's going to give enough time for kids to jump in there. And then once the meeting is over, go ahead and delete that post. And the reason for that is we don't want students clicking on that post and being able to re-log in to an empty meeting. That's just not going to work out for anyone and you'll get a lot of confused people. So if you can constantly delete those links and then create new rooms whenever you have a new class, that's going to be a lot easier for yourself as a teacher. Uh, these are just basic best practices for using Google Meet. Yes, it's not a perfect solution, but right now we're kind of in an environment and situation where a perfect solution doesn't really exist for our needs. Best part about this though is it's going to encourage these companies to relook at some of the practices they're doing and some of the features they have and maybe make those changes where this can turn into something useful. Hey, if you have your own best practices for using Google Meet, please make sure you leave those in the comment section below or you can email them directly or put them as a comment if you're viewing this on a specific Google slide deck. And as always, thanks for watching.